Today we need to get into an apology that Hype made on Dave's behalf over the streaming of his music video. We also need to get into people banning and getting angry over the LGBT themes in the Friends music video. And then we need to talk about a Hype executive speaking up about the protest. Say down links is Dave just a hater or not make sure you subscribe to with the notification bell on. Make sure you join us fan growing on Patreon and let's go. The first thing we need to get into is an executive speaking up on the protest that is going on. There's a lot of protests going on at the Hype headquarters. This is very interesting because the protests that surround each artist in each group are still going on, but then now added to that there is this whole Palestine Israel protest going on too. If you don't know what's going on with this, let me catch you up real quick. There's a lot of people who are very upset with the fact that the label CEO is currently Scooter Braun. They think he represents a side that the fans do not support and they're very upset that the label has yet to respond. In fact, they think that the label is unaware that the community is upset. There have been billboard trucks and protests going on outside, and then of course the internet has erupted with people being extremely upset. So people haven't been silent about their outrage. So it's actually very difficult for anyone who's working in the label to not know what's going on as their own social media pages are filled with people being angry and attacking. Now recently there was an executive that came out and posted on their story something that was very interesting and something that got the community very riled up. Now something to note is that every single person who is publicly involved in the label whether they are an executive or someone who is listed as an employee on the label's website they're being looked at very carefully. So the point where people are even stalking their social media to see what they're posting. And in some cases their profile is already public and they already post celebrities. So they have a large following already. But in other cases they're much smaller. Now the person that I'm talking about, I think they do actually have a pretty big following online as they do post about a lot of the groups that they're working on. So one of the executives posted on their Instagram a story of Suga on a bus. This is one of those fan activities where people will create birthday surprises of the members that they like and so they will put money into renting out an ad space on a bus and then put the members faces on that bus as a way to celebrate their birthday. So apparently there was this bus that was parked either somewhere near the headquarters or just somewhere in Korea and one of the executives took a picture of it and said, "You know what beats protest trucks? A birthday bus." Something along those lines. Now there are two things that I I really want to talk about and one of them being the reaction where people were saying, "Oh, look, the label is aware of what's going on. We should keep pushing so that we can get an answer." You see, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Of course, the label is aware. As I've mentioned earlier, how would you not be? But you shouldn't be taking this as, "Oh, they kind of know, so let's keep pushing so that they know even more how much trouble they're in." They know how much trouble they're in. The fact that they're actively ignoring it and not addressing it means they think it's stupid because it is. I've talked at length at how the protest is really dumb and how the accusations of Zionism meaning genocide makes no sense because Zionism is just a religion. And then the other thing is that the people were saying that the western executives that have newly made it into the label are people who don't understand the relationship between BTS and ARMY. They go on to say that western celebrities treat their fans terribly and they don't understand how to treat fans properly and thus the label has have become this place where the idols treat the fans really badly. Western celebrities don't treat their fans badly. Now, are there celebrities that just treat other people badly and are just bad people? Absolutely. However, Western celebrities treat their fans as if the fans are human beings. Parasocial relationships are a very real thing. However, parasocial relationships are exactly what they are fake relationships. It would annoy me to no end if a western celebrity came out and said that their dating relationship was with their fans because it's just not true. No, their fans personally and them are not dating. And I'm not here to say that BTS members saying this or any K-pop idol saying this is really a bad thing. I'm not. That's just how the industry works and they have to play into that. After a while, you have to be one thing and that one thing is for real. Are you actually dating or in a relationship with the celebrity that you're watching? No you're not. You don't know them. As always these issues spin out of control and spin in such a way that is so annoying has nothing to do with actually what is being protested. People are just upset that there is western executives in K-pop now and they're scared that those western executives are going to change K-pop stars like BTS and all the other groups in the label, make them quote unquote treat their fans badly. But something here that people don't understand is that K-pop idols are not stupid and they're not people that are just locked in Korea. They go all around the world. They go everywhere. They know how other people treat other people. They know how other countries do things differently. And I say this to say that if they're not currently 
currently treating their fans really badly, then they're not going to do that ever. Treating someone badly isn't a new concept that they've never heard of. And now that they're being exposed to Western executives or Western celebrities, they're like, oh my God, we can do that? It's not true. The label and the idol still treats their fans extremely well and do things for us all the freaking time. There's tons of free stuff. There's also tons of paid stuff that you can get involved in as well. Recently, there were some things that only a handful of people in the community were able to be a part of and it was very nice, which was V's album listening party launch. This happened around March 16th and 17th. Now this was on the promotional roster and it was supposed to be for both days. This was on Station Head and I don't know if he was actually gonna be there himself, but there was going to be a listening party there. Ultimately, the clip or the streaming party was removed and never happened, and people were extremely upset. However, the label did make it up another day, and they did end up apologizing, which was very nice. They ended up with the apology, noting that they will start a listening party within the hour. And they apologized deeply for this issue. This was likely a technical issue, and it wasn't that they didn't want to host it. Now, as far as I know, they didn't give explicit details on what went wrong and what happened. We don't really need to know. This also goes to show that we never know what goes on behind the scenes, and a lot of stuff could go on behind the scenes, and it's best to approach things with patience and kindness and understanding. And I say this not just even with this situation, but I say this with any situation in general, including situations that I've mentioned earlier. The Friends music video has also been getting a lot of controversy. I also think it's mainly because there hasn't been anything out recently. So there's a lot of eyeballs on this specific music video or a lot of eyeballs that are more willing to scrutinize. Well, there were a lot of people that were really upset over some of the LGBT references in there. Now, if you haven't watched the music video, then go ahead and check me out over on the Patreon, link in the description. I did post a reaction video to that yesterday and so it's a lot of fun. And if you do want to have a first look, then why not have it with me? But anyway, there were some LGBT references in the music video and there were a lot of lovey references in there. There were a lot of people kissing, there were a lot of romantic stuff. It could easily pass for like a Valentine's Day video. And so obviously among kissing scenes, we're going to see some gay people. I mean, that's pretty natural, I think. People were not happy about this. I mean, people were absolutely furious, saying how could V do this and why would he do all this and that stuff? And then there are very strange tweets online that people are saying about the music video and they are very upset. There was even one specific person that was upset and used the flag emoji, which even them saying that apparently the music video and all the kissing shows a lack of modesty and how could V do this? They didn't expect this of him. And to this, I have to say, what were you expecting then? This is 2024, there's people who are gay. And also a music video is just an overall concept of love. Love is going to be all sorts of different people and different orientations. BTS has also talked at length through several of their speeches to talk about genders and different identities and loving yourself. So why would V be against this? And I'm so curious, as to where these people are and what part of the world they're from to say that the kissing and the lovey stuff in the music video is extremely indecent for minors to see. Because first off, this video is not for minors. None of their stuff is for minors. It's never been. They've talked about domestic abuse and violence as well as suicide. And this was in their early days of their career. People are just upset because it's kissing and they don't like the fact that V is around kissing. They feel like he would be too influenced by kissing and then someday do it himself. I don't know. Personally, I didn't see anything wrong with the video and I was shocked to even see people upset about this because having LGBT things in the music video was not something that I even noticed. It was just like, we're in 2024. I don't think when we see two girls or two guys kissing, it's really anything that we think about. And then it's not like he was kissing in the music video. So there's nothing that was super scandalous about this. This also goes back to what I mentioned earlier, where a lot of K-pop fans hate the idea that K-pop is getting Western influences now. But I will say this, K-pop has always been gearing towards what is popular, and that has always been what their goal is. They have changed genres and styles over the years so much. If you look at their earlier works, and I mean even before the bubblegum pop music, they were doing kind of rock and they had the eyeliner and then it wasn't long after that they were doing hip-hop and the b-boy style stuff obviously inspired by what was trendy at the time and black music and then now they're going for more contemporary stuff this was always going to be the natural progression of k-pop and k-pop always wanted to tap into the western market let me know what you think make sure you check out patreon for more videos link down below thanks for the comments right here love you bye